So a little unusual that I couldn't actually make any eliminations as I go through the candidates. So the way to solve this is probably going to be a little different than what I'm used to doing. Greetings, friend. Tim Blake here from Smart Hobbies. The channel helps you turn a passing interest into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Today I am doing the fourth video in my Sudoku Handmade Classic series. Uh, I have a really good one for you today. I reached out to Clover. Um, I saw her on Cracking the Cryptic. She did a How I Set Sudoku video. It's wonderful. You've got to watch it. I actually put a link in the video description below so you can go check that out. And in that, she explained how she set Sudoku. And I found that just absolutely fascinating. I don't make puzzles. I just like to solve them. Um, but there's some points she hit on. And I reached out and said, hey, is there a puzzle yours I can solve? I like doing classics. She gave me this one. It's called Hurricane. And so some of the points she hit on that I want to talk about before I actually start solving is that she listed five things that a puzzle should be um, that will appeal to the solver. Uh, one of those being symmetry. And if you look here, hurricane, uh, you can see that if you look in the middle, it's kind of like the eye of a hurricane. And these are like the um, waves going out from the middle. So there's some symmetry going on. You can also see how blocks four and six match, how blocks eight and two match, how the ends match. And there's only one cell in each of block three and nine. Very cool. She also talked about centrality. In this puzzle, what you'll notice is there's a lot of cells in the middle and then here, and there's not that many cells out here in, in the far end. So in block seven and in block three, not too many cells. Maximality, minimality, she talked about. Uh, there's only 24 givens in this puzzle, which is pretty average for a harder Sudoku. It's not too many. Um, if you're trying to do an easy one, usually you'll have over 30 givens. And it's not too little, it's just the right amount. So it looks approachable. Uh, repeated patterns, like I said, you, you can see that just the way it's done, that there's gonna be some repeated patterns going on. And so I'm sure some of the solving will be repeated as we go throughout, and that's okay. And an implied predicted logical flow. Uh, if I had to guess, because of the constant, high concentration of cells here in the, kind of like the middle shoot, and then the uh, middle band here, that we're going to be able to solve in the middle first and they'll have to but the harder part of the puzzle is going to be able to figure out here in block seven and block three how to get those um, you can also see there's quite a bit of given seven so those might be solved pretty quickly um, but some of the other candidates you know and, and givens are not so many of so thank you very much clover for let me do this now i'm going to solve hurricane i have not done it before so i'm curious to see what's going to happen with that it's, it's, it's solving, solving. Uh, and so I like to show all the candidates. That's how I do the solves. Uh, a little bit different method than you might see on some of the other channels. Uh, it does create a lot of looks like naked singles. So yeah, it's easy to solve the one, nine, seven, eight, um, four, three, and two. And like I predicted, you know we're going to be able to solve kind of through the middle here pretty quickly. And then what you'll notice. Um, after we get that done, now I'm going to kind of try to branch out and see do I have any pairs, do I have any hidden singles um, that I can solve, and do I have any like uh, uh, triples. So, peek through here, I see a couple sevens, see how those match up. I'm looking now, I'm scanning through the candidates. And the eights limited to there, which I already know. And far in row six, there's no other eights that need to be solved there. All right. So right now, I don't see uh, anything else that I can do right off the bat. So why don't we go and we'll do some candidate filtering and see what I can do there. Okay, with the ones, nothing I can take out from the ones. The twos, uh, nothing I can do with the twos, the threes, Nope, I don't see anything I can do with the threes right now. 
with fours. I don't see anything with the fours just yet. The fives, okay. It seems to be something interesting going on there with the fives, but I don't, I can't use it to sell anything. The sixes, nothing there with the sixes. Okay, the sevens. Nope, the eights. Well, this was all pretty standard stuff. And the nines. Okay. So a little unusual that I couldn't actually make any eliminations as I go through the candidates. So the way to solve this is probably going to be a little different than what I'm used to doing. So let's go here um, to the XY. And there's not that many showing right now. So then that tells me that I must have missed some kind of Okay, well, there's something going on here. All right, so XY chain. Let's start here. Two to the eight. Eight to the three. Three to the five. And five to the two. So those, that's a, called an XY chain. It's all B, by value cells. Uh, you go strong weak links between them. And so wherever you end up, so I end up with this two here. Then any other two that you see, uh, they can't be a two. So two here, there has to be here. Or it has to be here. So this two can't be a two. That's got to be a six. Interesting. That's an interesting setup. And so now we create another by value cell. Which didn't really give me a lot of room, but that's that is so neat. I mean, okay, so we have a one four pair here, so that tells me I can get rid of all the ones and fours coming across. I can get rid of all the ones and fours in block three. And then I just created a uh, XY wing. So two, three, three, eight, and two, eight. If this is an eight, this has to be a two. If that's a three, that has to be a two. So one of these cells has to be a two. Anything they see can't be a two. So it can't be a two here, and it can't be a two here. This creates a three eight pair. So now threes and eights can be eliminated from the rest of these. And since this, this three is gone, that has to be a two. This makes that a six. Eight, nine, eight, nine pair. I can get rid of that. I can get rid of this eight. That's a three, that's an eight. Let me get rid of that. So we kind of cracked that piece of it for one very very interesting how we were able to reach the very far ends to start solving this one four nine the eight is the only eight left here in block nine five seven five seven one four one four okay eight nine eight nine that can't be an eight uh, because of that pair now i'm trying to regroup and see if there's anything i missed easy that i can solve Okay, we have a five, which makes it three, nine, six, seven, five, five, six, seven. And now I'm just kind of running through some naked singles, four, six. I think we cracked the puzzle using that quite unique XY chain way out on the four corners. I love that. And then to back it up with the uh, XY wing, which helps us solve the rest of it. Cool puzzle. All right. Again, it was a pleasant solve. I really enjoyed that. I look forward to it. Uh, going all the way through the candidates without making eliminations was really unique for me. But then to go and to find with just a few by value cells, we had to find an XY chain that worked and really helped me crack the puzzle. Awesome. Very ingenious, Clover. Thank you so much for letting me feature this on the channel. Uh, if you like this kind of solving, please subscribe, like, 
uh, share this with other people who want to see more classic Sudoku puzzles solved. I plan to keep doing these and bring you different setters from uh, around the world. Um, and in the meantime, check out some of these other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching.